You know, I've been in higher education for almost 20 years now, and I don't think I've ever been at an institution that supports our students academically as much as we do at the College of Coastal Georgia. Our classes are taught by actual faculty members and not graduate students. Career fairs, we have we have them all the time, and so there's there's the Marine Corps over here, there's uh, the FBI over here, there's Waffle House, there's all kinds of stuff. And so if you can think about it, they're here trying to trying to get you a job, trying to get you to your next phase in life. Welcome to City Hall here in the City of Brunswick. Today we are going to interview Regina McDuffie, the City Manager, about her one year anniversary. We are so excited to be with her and talk about all that she's accomplished during this amazing first year as City Manager. Stay tuned, it's all coming up next right here on Golden Isles TV. Hi, welcome back to Golden Isles TV. I'm your host Avery Brooks and we're here with Regina McDuffie. She is the City Manager um, for the City of Brunswick and it's been one year since she came to the City of Brunswick so we're celebrating her one year anniversary. Uh, how are you today? I'm great Avery, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so one year, can you believe it? It's been a whirlwind tour if I can say so myself. Um, just getting started I felt like I was here. Um, didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, I guess initial um, things that I wasn't able to, you know, get into, but just seemed to hit the ground running. Right. Well, you've had a lot of challenges. I mean, this year you've, you've experienced, obviously, coming to a new place, a new city, and all that that, that involves. Um, but in addition to that, COVID, um, right after that, and then just getting started with all the new projects. But uh, tell us about that challenge. Yeah, um, you know, I have not been here where it wasn't COVID. So we are still, you know, in a work mode of whether we allow the public to come back in to the places. But what we have been doing in order to accommodate is to improve our online services and improve our what we call contactless services so that people can have access to city government um, and the things that we provide for the citizens even during the COVID. So we've never really shut down. We've all been working um, throughout this process and I think the staff has just done a wonderful job. At first we were having some issues with the, you know, people being out, of course, quarantined and that kind of thing, but that has slowed down as well and now we've gotten back to pretty much a normal operation so we're you know contemplating opening city hall and the old city hall back up to just regular business okay so um yeah so it sounds like you you've tried to adapt and um and, and conduct business as usual even during covid so i'm sure there's been a lot of adjustments and however um you have managed to accomplish a lot during this year um so today let's talk about all of those great accomplishments well thank you um, yes, I feel like, you know, the City of Brunswick has definitely moved forward. We have a lot of different things going on. Um, I'm very proud of the city being involved in a lot of activity with the county. Uh, we've had unification meetings and we were able to present uh, a state of the city address, which kind of gave information about how the city's doing financially as well as economically throughout the year. And I was able to make that presentation to city and county officials and some other community leaders. And I think that went a long way in terms of allowing people to know where we are. As some other things that we've done is we have um, the 
CDBG DR program, which we talked about, we visited there. Yes. They are moving forward. They have projects and houses that they are, you know, working towards um, rehabilitation. We have demolitions that have been done throughout the city for structures that have been burned in fires that we've accomplished that I'm really proud of because one of the primary focuses that I have is to improve the housing inventory here in the city. And so that's been really um, a great accomplishment. Internally, we've done a lot of policy updates so that our employees will have, you know, proper procedures and policies as well as we implemented the pay study, which I'm, again, very proud of because it put the city at a minimum of 11.50 an hour for our workers. So we basically um, paying, I'd say 11.50, I think it's $11. Um, which was uh, a substantial increase. I think our lowest paid weight when we when I got here was right at nine dollars. So we did Big increase that. Yeah, and you know it helps not only the citizens but it helps the quality of life of our employees. So we're I'm very proud of that. Um, you know the city worked really hard and we do work hard to finish our SPLOS projects. So we did a parks improvement plan and we have um, started kind of just renovating and making sure that the playground equipment, that the outdoor recreational equipment is all repaired, replaced, and our parks are cleaned up. Um, you know, with COVID, there's a lot of encouragement for outside activity and outdoor recreation. So we wanna make sure that our citizens have every opportunity to, you know, have time outside. Yes. Um, there's been improvements to Overlook Park, there's improvements um, to Howard Coffin Park. So there's a lot of improvements that we've seen in that area. Right, so yeah, this is the time. Um, the initiative is, is great to get everybody outside and make the parks the best they can be. Um, in addition to that, I know there have been ongoing um, uh, construction projects like the public works. And right. What, uh, the street was the redone. L street, L street, yeah, L street, L street, L street was yeah. completed, mm -hmm. so we were very proud of that. And, you know, we did a um, stormwater master plan, and that plan was actually completed and done prior to my being here, but we did a presentation because they had not presented the information to the commissioners. And what we are able to do, even though we didn't have, we needed the SPLOS money in order to move forward with that because we pretty much spent or have or are spending all of the SPLOS money that we have right now, which is the special purpose local option sales tax money that we get in for the one penny sales tax. So right. we are pretty much spent all of everything for the projects that we have on the books. So the new projects, we will need the additional SPLOS in order to go forward with those projects. We are going to do some design and engineering to hopefully be shovel ready with those projects when the time comes and when the money gets in, hopefully. In addition to that, we had a roads assessment, which is another project that I'm really proud of because it basically, and I hope that at some point I can show you that and, and display it on your um, show because it's really neat. It has a video of every road in this street in the city oh, wow. and it shows every pothole all the cracks it shows where you know maybe we have drainage problems and it's really a, a just comprehensive assessment of the roads in in the city so that we know what roads and we cannot you know we're not just blindly picking and choosing what we repair we are strategically repairing roads that are you know well traveled or heavily traveled we're looking at neighborhoods and what roads needs to be done in certain neighborhoods that are you know deteriorated more than others and that kind of thing so it's a really great tool that we'll use going forward nice that's uh, that's something new i haven't heard about that that's a very detailed strategic plan it is um, some very targeted literally targeted potholes in the in the right on the right streets so that's great yeah and one of the other things that i realized is that the city has a comprehensive plan that you know we have to update every five years it's a state requirement and basically in looking back at that the city has been on you know reaching some of the goals that they set in that plan such as with the land bank. Right now we are, um, the land bank is getting back up and running. The Urban Redevelopment Agency is, you know, running well. They're looking at um, some board training and things like that so that they can enhance their operations. Um, the new budget, which will start July 1st, um, we are in the budget process right now and we will have a public hearing coming up 
I think in uh, June 2nd. So our public hearing for the new budget will be June 2nd. But that budget has great support for business development, um, for planning, for uh, the quality of life because it supports the housing um, initiative that we have with our CDBG and it provides just a tremendous amount of support internally. Um, we are looking at our IT, you know, support for the city, not only for our operations, but you know, how we provide city services, as well as for our employees, we're looking at some enhancement in terms of, you know, our organization. So I think the new budget um, is really going to be impactful, not only to the public, but to the city's operation internally. Yeah, it sounds great. It sounds like you've started all these projects, kind of gotten some momentum, and are going to be carrying it through to the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, there's a, and, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, we have a lot going on. Our uh, downtown development, as you have Matthew come in, he yes. will talk about all the, you know, some of the things that are happening downtown. And I think, you know, our downtown is something that we all should be proud of. I hope that the public can come out when we have activities and events and see, you know, what's going on downtown. We have a lot of redevelopment. And, you know, I really want it to be impactful for the city's uh, citizens of Brunswick. Yes, absolutely. So things like First Friday um, and lots of other things coming up that Matthew will uh, talk about coming up soon. Yeah, one of the nice things, and this is, um, I, I joke about it, but we are actually trying to get, because, um, you know, cleanup of the city is another important aspect. We're looking at our waste collection, you know, contracts and looking at how we'll better serve our citizens with waste collection. But we also have the drainage, um, and we're going to bring the goats back. I don't know if you're familiar with the goats, but we have, um, a couple of years ago, they said they brought in this team of goats that cleaned out some of our ditches. Wow. And they said they did a really good job because they can get in places that our crews cannot. Oh. So we're going to try and get them back. So when we get them back, we'll certainly have you, you know, <laughs> do a show um, with the goats. With the goats. Great, great. Well, I just, you know, I'm really excited about some of the things um, that we're here doing in the city. Um, I'm, I get excited about things like Christmas lights. I want us to, you know, just be able to promote our downtown with the Christmas shows and the parade. So we'll have some enhancements in our Christmas lights this year um, that I, I hope that people will come to see and, you know, it'll bring people downtown. And I tell people it's not just, you know, having people engaged you bring people downtown, it spurs on and supports the businesses downtown. So we, you know, that's one of our primary focuses as well. Absolutely. So, you know, we really want business development, we want housing improvements, we want quality of life. And that's some of the things that we've been working towards. And I have to say that the commission has been really supportive. The mayor and the commissioners are, you know, very supportive of what we've been doing and what I've been accomplishing this year. And I really am thankful for them and the staff for all that they've done throughout the year to help, you know, move things along. Yes, absolutely. As I say, it takes a village. So if, if you're doing good things and you're feeling supported, getting the support you need, then that um, makes everything move forward. So. Right. And, you know, I also um, think that I have been in, um, you know, just really regular conversations with the county officials, as well as uh, the Economic Development, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Chamber. We meet on a regular basis just to talk about what's going on in the city and how we can work together. And I think that's one of the critical aspects of just getting things moving forward and continuing to grow the community. Absolutely, yeah, everybody working together. I'm just grateful for the people in the community um, everybody has been so welcoming. The staff has been very supportive. Um, I got out and rode bikes with the police department and that was one of the most fun things that I, I mean, work-wise it was good. I was able to see a lot of the community and, you know, visit with actual people, citizens here. And it was just a good aspect of my job and just kind of acclimating me to the community. And, you know, I can't say enough about the people who are investing in this community and that was one of the things that I told the commissioners with our budget is that you know we need to invest in ourselves 
because there are a lot of people investing in the community as well. So the city needs to continue to invest to you know keep things repaired, keep things updated, uh, make improvements within what we have control over, so that the people who are investing in our community feels like you know we are alongside with them. So that's yes. one of the things that I wanted to convey, and hopefully will continue to do. Absolutely. Well, you've accomplished a lot. We're we're thrilled to see that you've had a great year. We can't wait to see what you do in the second year. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today. and we, we just wish you a happy first anniversary. Well, thank you so much, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. I hope that this um, communication is getting out to the citizens, and I just want to say thank you to the community. And, uh, you know, I love Brunswick. It's great. So you can catch the show on Gold Niles TV on Comcast Channel 98 um, every night. Uh, during the month of June, and you can also watch on YouTube. So uh, check us out online or on TV. Welcome back to Gold Islands TV. I'm here with Matthew Hill, uh, Director of Downtown Development Authority. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. I love your spring green. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting ready for summer. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we're talking about summer today um, and what's going on in downtown Brunswick. So talk about um, some of the things that are coming up this summer. Sure. Well, of course, every month we have our first Friday. Uh, the next one's going to be on June 4th and then on July 2nd. Uh, that's from 5 to 8 p.m. downtown. Stores stay open late. It's a good time to mill around and meet people. Um, restaurants usually have specials, and it's a great time for the community. We also have every Friday and Saturday night throughout June music in the parks. It alternates between Jekyll Square and Mackin Square but that's every Friday and Saturday evening. So that's a great time to come and enjoy downtown Brunswick. That is nice. So what time does the music start? Music starts at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, depending on if there's a play at the theater. Okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Right. And you can go to uh, look at Brunswick Music District on Facebook to see the schedule and who's going to be playing. Okay. Brunswick Music District. Brunswick Music District. Awesome. Right. Right. Okay. What else? Well, of course, it's almost July, so we have our old-fashioned 4th of July celebration, which this year we're going to have in person at Mary Ross Waterfront Park. Great. And those festivities start on Saturday, July 3rd. Okay. We'll have a parade, mostly for kids and families. It's a walking parade from Hanover Square up Newcastle Street to Mary Ross Park. Okay. That starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then at the park from 10 o'clock until 3 o'clock, we have music, um, food trucks, um, some kids' activities, and some other stuff going on. Then on Sunday, we have our 4th of July festival. Um, and that will, will give away free watermelon slices, we'll have music, we'll have kids' games, and of course the fireworks at 9 o'clock. Wow. Sounds awesome. It yeah. really sounds like it's a an entire weekend it full, is. Of, it full is. of events. Because the Friday is first Friday, so oh, you okay. spend the whole weekend in that time of How nice. How nice that first Friday obviously falls yeah. on, on the July 4th weekend. So that's awesome. Doesn't happen every year, so we're going to make the most of it. Yes. And um, what do you do? People might want to know COVID restrictions or masks or anything, or because it's outside. Right, it's an outdoor event, so of course, if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. And if you're not, or if you just feel like you want to wear a mask, that's fine. Uh, everybody can do what they need, feel they need to do. Uh, but there are no uh, official mask restrictions for that event. Okay, yeah. awesome. Outdoor event, so no restrictions. So that is great news. Right, right. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Uh, we do have an art walk on June the 5th, that Saturday from 10 until 3. Um, on Newcastle Street, we'll have artists and uh, craft people out selling their wares and some demonstrations. So that'll be great beginning to the month of June. Yes, yes. So some things going on in June right. and rolling all the way into uh, the big July 4th celebration. That's right. Um, and don't forget about First Friday. So. Um, Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Avery. This is awesome. Okay.
You know, I've been in higher education for almost 20 years now, and I don't think I've ever been at an institution that supports our students academically as much as we do at the College of Coastal Georgia. Our classes are taught by actual faculty members and not graduate students. Career fairs, we have we have them all the time, and so there's there's the Marine Corps over here, there's uh, the FBI over here, there's Waffle House, there's all kinds of stuff. And so if you can think about it, they're here trying to trying to get you a job, trying to get you to your next phase in life. We're excited to be able now to offer you the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Funding that's being offered to the citizens of Brunswick and the county. If you live within the 31520 zip code in the city or the county, please come down to 503 Mansfield. We're here to help you get your funding to repair your home, reconstruct your home, and also to help you clear your title. Once again, if you are in the 31520 zip code of the city or the county, please give us a call. Hi, welcome back to the City of Brunswick show. We're here with Matthew Hill, and he is going to be talking with SML Surf Company today in downtown Brunswick, located right across from beautiful Mary Ross Park. They have surfboards and all kinds of merchandise. It's an awesome place. Come check it out. Stay tuned to hear more. Hi, I'm Matthew Hill, director of the Downtown Development Authority, and we're here in beautiful downtown Brunswick at SML Surf Company with its owner, Jeffrey Gable. Jeffrey, how you doing? Doing great, how are you? Good, good, good. thanks. So you've been here on Bay Street about a month now, right? About a solid month and a half. Um, I used to be on the back side of the warehouse, uh, just moved around front and, uh, you know, trying to get a little bit more exposure out front and, you know, being able to see the place a little bit easier. Okay, yeah. And as Avery said, you build surfboards, uh, you have some nice merchandise here, but you also do skateboards and people can build their own, right? Yeah, um, I have right now, I actually have someone in here. She's uh, finishing painting her board that we worked on together. Uh, she did majority of work and it's, it's, it's a fun project because you can get, you know, people that have never done this before to see all the steps and all the, you know, parts to building what is building the surfboard. Uh, all right, all right. Well, let's take a look inside. We're back again inside SML Surf Company and Jeffrey has one of his customers working on a board that she has built. So Jeffrey, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what's going on here? Okay, what we have is, um, this is Christy Cavanaugh. She's come in and she wanted to make her own board. So had her come on in, kind of showed her the ropes, showed her you know what tools to use, kind of got her rolling on it. And um, she did majority of the work on it and she's come in to do the paint job. Um, you know, we help, you know, kind of help her like getting the taping lines done, getting ready to go. And, and she came, she picked the colors and what she wanted. Um, so this week will be, we're finishing up paint. Um, I think she might come by Friday for just some touch up. And then by next week, we're going to have it in glass, ready to go. So here we are in November and Christmas time's coming up. So you do custom boards, but I know that, like Christy, people can build their own. Do you have any advice for people shopping or thinking about maybe a board for Christmas for somebody? Biggest thing is, I guess, having, you know, putting an order in as early as possible. Um, you know, Christmas, they do take two to three weeks to get done, and that's pushing it. Um, I do have some stock boards this year. Last year, I didn't, I wasn't prepared for Christmas. You know, I kind of was doing them as, as they came about. And this year, I was able to kind of get some stock boards rolling a little bit quicker. So at least have some ready to go. But if you do want a custom where, you know, you want a certain paint job or a certain image put on there for, you know, your kid, your spouse, anyone, we can still get it done. You know, and I have some people that, you know, I do have some, a um, uh, couple kids that actually ride my boards in contests for me. And they come over and they'll help out sand and stuff and give me a good, you know, give me a little boost when I need it. Yeah. Um, well, and one of your students just... Uh one with his own board that he built right? well both um the two guys that i um that ride for me um it's liam and wyatt kolkmeyer um local guys on saint simons um they've actually the contests are all held on tybee island and they both have i mean they pretty much came out of nowhere they surprised everyone they're like where are these kids from and they're like there's actually ways in saint simons and these guys i mean they were in first place in um i think three different divisions like they just kept winning and winning and winning and winning. And the one he did, he came in here and shaped a board. And, and this winter, they'll be back in here. Both of them will be working on their next boards. Okay. All right, great. All right, well, here we are in my shaping bay. Um, it's kind of closed off from the rest of the shop just to keep the dust down. 
Um, you know, here's one of the boards that just um, shaped out, it's glass and hot coated. Get ready for sanding, it's got its hot coat on there, which is the last coat of resin, and then pretty much gonna get about a 400 grit sand, and then um, a lot of times I'll wet sand them, get them real fine, and then a wax and polish job. So that'll bring the shine out for it. Um, this is a board, I've, I've first time I've ever done a checkerboard, probably the last time I do a checkerboard, um, it was two and a half hours of just taping and cutting. I mean, by the time you measure out each square and, and get it all taped and peeled out, sprayed, and then ready to go, um, it was definitely a, definitely a process. Um, most boards I shape, I mean, at this point now I can get a board done in about 45 minutes. Um, shaped this one the other day. This one's getting ready to go. And then this is my daughter, Addison. She's shaping her own board. Um, she's 11. She's been in here. I mean, saw in hand, sandpaper covered in dust. And... Uh, it's been great. It's great for her to be in here. And I love seeing, you know, kids actually get dirty, get their hands dirty, you know, get them off an iPad and phone and let them actually do some work. SML Surfco is online. We have a website, www.smlsurfco.com, on Instagram and Facebook. And also, if you need to call, um, you can call or text 912-237-0243. Feel free to text. It's probably the easiest thing because when I have the sander going, can't hear anything. Well, Jeffrey, thanks for showing us around, and Christy, thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> and remember, SML Surf Company has new boards in stock, uh, but they'll also do custom work and also skateboards. And if you're not ready to do that, you can come get a t-shirt or a cap. And we're right here on Bay Street, across the street from Mary Ross Park at SML Surf Company. <laughs>